Hey, what is going on guys? Weevil Yugito here, back with another video. And welcome to yet another Archetype series. I'm under one of these uh, that's been popular since the like Heretic Dragons. So today we're going to be talking about the Girgia archetype coming out in Return of the Duelist. And basically my objective is to summarise the archetype itself, uh, discuss the cards within the archetype and any possible size against the deck, um, as well as what your side deck should look like if you are in fact a Girgia player. Okay, so they're all level 4, Earth or Attribute and Machine type. Uh, their effects involve special summoning from the hand, special summoning from the graveyard, special summoning from the deck, and searching your deck, which isn't too bad at all. Um, that's good versatility for a machine-based archetype. So their main monsters are Girgia Accelerator, who you can special summon from your hand if you control another face of Girgia. Girgiano, you can tribute to special summon a Girgia from the graveyard. Girgiano MK2, when he's normal to flip summon, you can special summon a Girgia monster from your hand or graveyard in face of defense position. Not too shabby at all, because you're more than likely going to go over this guy, Girgia Armor. He's not too bad at all, 1900 defense points. You can put him into face down defense once per turn, and when he's put face up, he's basically your searcher card. You can add a level 4 lower Girga monster from your deck to your hand. Finally, we have Girga Arsenal. Uh, this card gains 200 attack for each face of Girga monster you control. You can tribute this card, special summon one Girga monster from your deck, except Girga Arsenal in face of defense position. We're seeing a pattern here. Okay, so the skeleton of the deck allows you to special summon and search a lot, but what is the actual strategy behind the Girgas? What is their win condition? What precisely are they trying to do? Okay, well, of course, it's to XYZ a lot. They have Utopia, My Stroke, Gear Gigant X, their own XYZ monster, who I will discuss in a second, as well as every other rank for uh, XYZ conceivable as a possible target. Given how easy they can get three level four monsters in the field, they can also go into Violent Sigma, who I think is a really good card. I think a lot of people actually forget about this guy. You can just equip stuff, uh, your opponent's monsters, and if they're running a deck of all the same attribute, you can just attack over and destroy and start the damage step. It's pretty trolly. If they run Jumbo Drill, they also have Digvorja, King of Heavy Industry as a target. If they manage to bring out two level 4s, normal summon this guy, make everything level 5, and overlay into Digvorja to pop some cards. And if, per se, you only have two level 5 monsters in the field, you can still go into everyone's favourite rank 5 XYZs, Adrius and Tyrus. Given the special summoning potential of the deck, it will more than likely want to use a limiter removal to push for an OTK. However, an OTK as a win condition isn't exactly ideal in this deck since their strongest XYZ monster is 2300 attack points that is specific to the archetype. One could argue that Gear Gigant X in and of himself is a win condition, because if you get this guy out, you're basically plussing all the time. His effect is as follows, because it's a little blurry on the uh, image. Once per turn, you can attach one XYZ material from this card, add one level 4 lower machine type monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. That's damn good, I have to say, because Gear Gear Accelerator, the fact that you can add him from your deck or graveyard, get a free special summon, and then special summon another one overlay into a second one or whatever. These guys can definitely XYZ a lot. When this card leaves the field, you can target one level 3 or lower Girga monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. That's basically Girgano or uh, Girgano MK2. Which isn't too bad because um, one of them you can tribute to special summon another Girga from the graveyard. So it's basically like special summoning a level 4 one. Okay, so obviously machines have been around for a long time, and there are a lot of generic support cards for machines. I've already mentioned one of them, limiter removal, but I'm going to be talking about some archetypes uh, in the past, as well as some support cards which are generic to machines, and see if they apply to these Girgas. Let's get into it. Okay, first of all, let's um, lament what we don't have. Iron Call, if you control a face of machine, you can special summon with level 4 machine from the graveyard. Its effects are negated and destroyed during the end phase. That, that's just basically an easy way to get a free uh, rank 4 XYZ somehow. Okay, Future Fusion is an obvious thing, except it might be banned, so I'm going to hold my tongue and not get too excited about it. And I will simply say that if it gets banned, the Gyrgyz are going to have to come up with a different way to uh, span the field, which they shouldn't really have a problem with. But of course, if Future Fusion sticks around, then it's joy for them, and they'll be able to go into Chimera Tech, uh, Fortress, and Overdragon, which are awesome. Limiter, I already mentioned that. Uh, Ultimate Offering, I have seen on a couple ban lists, so there's a possibility of going down to one, although we don't know which ban list is actually real at this point. However, um, if you're running a gadget engine in it with Machina Fortress, although I find this particularly unplayable with Gear Gears, uh, then go for it. Either way, I think you should still run it at 1, because sometimes you just need that one extra Gear Gear to plus off stuff and go into Gear Giganto X and just go crazy. So it's a really good card to run the machines overall. Uh, since these guys are all Earth and all machines, uh, you might as well run Goes at Match and Rivalry Warlords, or one or the other, if you want to be a complete dick. Uh, as for the rulings for this card, these cards, people may not know about them. You can't normal, tribute, flip, XYZ, synchro, fusion, or special on a monster's effect. Uh, any card that would put a different type of monster on the field, which basically means you can't go summon two earth machine type monsters, overlay into a wind whatever type monster. You can't do that, because there would be a different type and a different attribute on the field. 
As for the archetypes that could support these guys, you've got the Earth archetype in general. Uh, Grand Soul of the Elemental Lord, for example, if you have five Earth monsters in your graveyard, you can special summon him, and then you can special summon a monster from either graveyard, which isn't too bad at all. His effect is pretty good. Uh, all the gadgets are Earth, all the gear gets are Earth. Every other machine that's halfway decent is Earth, so it's pretty easy to get five Earths in grave. Okay, well, the obvious archetype that supports them is, of course, the Machina archetype, because they're all Earth and they're all machine. All the gadgets are level four, Machina gear frame is level four, but the problem is there isn't a lot of synergy between their effects. Uh, the Girgia effects involve special summoning Girgis, searching of Girgis, etc. And not necessarily searching of generic level 4 machine type monsters, except for their XYZ. Who, you, of course, you can go into a lot. But I just found when I tested these guys out on Doing Network together as a single archetype, they didn't actually work all that well. Nevertheless, I do feel that Girgis need an archetype to hold them up as a crutch. Uh, they can't really make it on their own, I feel. As for Karakuris, there's actually a small loop existing with this deck, with uh, Girgis Salarier, Girgis Armor. Uh, Nishipachi and Genix Ally Birdman. If you have all four of these cards, or a combination of these cards, um, you can actually go into three Beredos, overlay into three rank sevens or whatever, into Big Eye, and just go crazy in one turn. You just need two cards. Uh, if you're looking for the link or the link to the topic that talked about this, I'll put it in the description of the video, and you guys can check it out for yourselves. In a nutshell, it's basically because uh, Gear Gear Armor can't exist in face down attack position, so every time a battle position is changed, he flips up, you get a search, you search for Gear Accelerator, you special summon again, etc. You guys get the picture. Okay, so next we have the Ancient Gear archetype, but again, just like the previous archetypes I've discussed, I feel that this archetype is just taking advantage of the fact that the monsters are all machine and all earth, even though there is no synergy whatsoever between the two decks. But in any case, whatever support archetype you end up choosing is up to you. I'm just giving you the options here, and none of them are particularly great. The Karakuri loop is pretty nice though. In any case, now I'm going to go over the side deck cards, uh, the ones that you would side in your own deck against another deck, and the ones you would side against Gyrgyz. Okay, Konami were clearly having a laugh when they created this card, but System Down is easily the best side against any machine uh, archetype of any kind. It banishes all facing machines from the field and from the graveyard, and you only have to pay a thousand life points to do it. And it's not restricted. Two other awesome things about this card, it doesn't destroy, it banishes. Which means all these cards that negate destruction, like Starlight Road, Stardust Dragon, and stuff like that, uh, won't work. Furthermore, nobody runs Spell and Trap Negation anymore, really, so nothing will really, really be able to stop this card. This is just an overall, generally good side. It doesn't work against Gear Accelerator or Gear Armor, which are the kind of main engine cards, but it does work against Gear Arsenal and the XYZ, which isn't too bad. From testing, I found out that this deck hates mass removal cards, basically. Flipping up Gyrgy Armor and you going Torrential is just dickish because you don't control Gyrgy anymore and you can't special summon the Accelerator that you search up. The other road you can go down is siding in 3 Royal Decrees, because like gadgets and other stuff like that, they do run a lot of back row. They like to protect themselves, uh, protect their effects, um, and enable them to go off and to swarm and to go into XYZs and so forth, but if you stop that, you know, they're kind of screwed. As for hand traps, don't sign in Effect Vader, that'd be stupid, it doesn't do anything against the deck really. Side in Electric Buyers. People forget that this guy can also take control of machines, which is awesome. So side in three of these and a few system downs and you should have no trouble. Protection against this stuff, well, you have Spell and Trap Negation in the forms of Dark Bribe, Solemn Judgment, or just stop your opponent from moving cards from play altogether with Imperial Iron Wall. But in any case, the deck is promising, it's pretty easy to build. Uh, machines are a well-supported archetype, as I have said. Uh, but let me know what you think of it guys, I'm going to leave the video there, uh, be sure to comment, rate and subscribe as always, and thanks for watching. Uh, I am Evil YouTuber. I've got plenty more videos coming up soon, I will talk to you guys later, gonna get some dinner and stuff, so peace out guys. Oh yeah, and Japanese won the World Championships, yay! Uh, I actually stayed up uh, to watch the final, I watched Pro Winston with Zodia deck, what a troll, yeah! <laughs> Thumbs up for Pro Winston, baby! But anyway, I'm going to be putting up a video discussing the final match. Um, I've got a few more videos coming up too. Uh, rules of the game, answers to the meta, and uh, my sneak peek report, whatever I happen to get at the sneak peek and how I do and stuff. So keep an eye for all that stuff. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace. For real this time.